It's time for reason. Yes, yes, and yes. They should be scared. They should be absolutely petrified of the fact that we are talking about trying to change the Constitution because this is their loophole. Now, what we have to do, Republicans, you have to rally around one singular movement. You have to create the amendment in order to change the suitable funding phrasing in the Constitution. You have to be able to do it. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Good morning to you. Welcome into the Voice of Reason right here on the Mid American Network. It is the day before one of the greatest days of the entire year. I was driving to work this morning and the roads were uh, oddly, oddly, a little bit dead and a little bit slower when it comes to traffic this morning. Now, uh, granted, it's already 5 o'clock in the morning when I'm uh, driving to work, but nonetheless, uh, usually there's a good amount of traffic, not a whole lot of traffic this morning, meaning that people are finally beginning to take some time off. Maybe they're already traveling for the holidays. Maybe they're already traveling to go see some family and friends, or maybe they're just sleeping in because, heck, you actually have an opportunity to do so. Regardless of what that is, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I'm so excited about this weekend. I'm so excited about tomorrow. It's going to be such a great time. I hope you enjoy the family and the friends and the food and the football and everything else as well. It's going to be a great, wonderful day. Welcome into it. This is The Voice Reason. I am Andy Hoosier. It's an honor to have you along this morning. If you are waking up early and you still have to go do your thing, that's what I'm here for, baby. It's time to get the day started. It's time to get excited. Time to get motivated. Let's carpe diem all over this place. It's going to be a good one today. 316-721-8255. 316-721-TALK. If you want to join in, I had an entire, it was funny, I was doing my show prep yesterday, and I had an entire laundry list of things that I wanted to touch on today. An entire laundry list of politics and issues and legislation and current events and things that I wanted to talk about. And I got just about done with my entire show prep and my kind of my lineup of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to talk about, and I I got just about all done with it. And then I stopped and I realized... It's actually Thanksgiving tomorrow, or the day after. It's on Thursday. I always do, and if you're vaguely new to the show and new to what we do on this show, the day before the holiday, if we're since we do a best of tomorrow for Thanksgiving Day, I and we're not going to be on live, and we're not going to be talking about that. Most people are kind of tuned out, doing their own thing, and they're having fun, and they're starting the turkey, and they're just kind of going about their business. Because of that, it's the holiday season. It's not really the time and the place to do some in depth really intense uh, politics. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we do on this show for every holiday is we're going to do a holiday special, a holiday themed show as we do before Thanksgiving, as we do before Christmas, as we do for St. Patty's Day, as we do for all of them. So I want to open up the lines to you at 316-721-8255 or wherever you may be listening uh, outside of the state of Kansas, within the state of Kansas, all over the state of Kansas. Uh, I want you to call in and tell me what you're thankful for. We're going to be doing what we do every single year, especially on Thanksgiving, is talking about the history of Thanksgiving, the politics of Thanksgiving and have a little fun with it because there are some misconceptions that kind of float around out there that we need to address because the progressives, as usual, have found a way to complain about something. I mentioned this yesterday, but wouldn't it be absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible to live your life to where everything in your life is negative? Everything in your life is terrible and horrible. The world's against you. The world's out to get you. The world is an evil, terrible, scary place to where I need my adult coloring books and my therapy dog, and I need to hide in my little dorm room, and I just need to run away from the world and live in my parents' basement for the rest of my life because I'm too scared to live out into the real world. Because when I do, then I fail, and when I fail, that means that I'm the victim and everybody's out to get me, and just everything in my life is negative. I can't imagine living my life like that. I really can't. I, it would drive me nuts. I'm a pa- positive, happy-go-lucky kind of guy. I have sunshine and rays of sunlight coming out of my you-know-what every single day because that's just the kind of guy I am. Now, I get emotional. I get a little hyped up. I get a little excited at times, but I am a very positive individual. I always see things in the positive light. 
I always look for the good. That's why I think I'm really good at debating, by the way, because even when we debate, I can try to find someone's... Un- I can try and understand, at least, someone's position. They may be wrong, but I can at least understand where they're coming from. And then I try and debunk it that way. And usually, we can get to the point to where we'll, so we can address the serious issue of what their concerns are, because I can at least try to understand where they're coming from here. At some point, though, when you're especially talking about individuals like uh, Antifa and some of these other members, you really just can't understand where they're coming from because it's so ridiculous. It's so absurd. So, uh, But at least we try. At least we try. So I'm a very positive kind of guy. But to play the victim your entire life, if you are coming home from a long day and you're just upset if your co-worker is just an angry bitter individual to where nothing goes right it's always somebody else's fault and they're always angry and it's always their it's always there's always something wrong you know those kind of people that's exactly what progressives are that's what the, that's their lively mentality that's what they do because everybody is against them they are unique they are special, they are uh, uh, smarter or more intelligent than anybody else, they are more thoughtful than anybody else, they are more caring than anybody else, they are more uh, less bigoted or they are more open-minded or more tolerant than anybody else, and if you disagree with them in any way, shape, or form, then all of a sudden you are the bad guy. You are the problem with society, because they're very good at passing off blame, are they not? I mean, look at what they do. Oh, you're a Donald Trump supporter. You must automatically, by default, be a white supremacist, a neo-Nazi, and a a racist. Because that's how they go about their lives. They automatically go to that because they think that unless you agree with them with exactly the way their thought process is, which they're very open and tolerant and lovey-dovey and accepting of everybody, except, of course, the opposition. But if you agree with them, then you get it. If you don't agree with them, then you are the problem. And they even take these messages to holidays. You hear it around Thanksgiving. You hear it around Christmas. You hear it around Fourth of July. You hear it around any type of holiday. Because if you celebrate these holidays, then you're buying into the age-old holiday of the white-led supremacists that uh, run this country. And therefore, you're you're sticking to the traditions of this nation, of uh, the traditionalism of uh, the white-class ruling of the Western theology of whatever they want to call it. You're buying into it, which means that you are part of the norm, which means you are part of the problem, according to them. And they love to really rise up and cause their little issues around the holidays, which I find very entertaining because it's very easy to debunk them. But they get all in a tiff. They get all in a bunch. They get all worried and all that's even more so than what they usually are during the rest of the year. They're all worried When it comes to the holiday time, because if you buy into Thanksgiving, then you are part of the problem that actually the white supremacists came and destroyed the land of the Native Americans that killed them, that did horrible things to them, that took over their land. And you, by celebrating Thanksgiving, you are the problem. You are the problem because you're buying into all this garbage. If you celebrate Christmas, then all of a sudden you are not tolerant of any other religion because you're not accepting of anybody else at that time other than other Christians who support Christmas. But of course, when any other holiday is going on that may be of a different descent, of a different minority or a different tradition or a different religion, then uh, so we need to be aware of that and we need to support it of all, at all costs. So we need to do whatever we can to hype up that one. But it, with Christmas, with the traditional ones, no, we can't even look at it. We can't acknowledge it. And you need to step away from your religion. You cannot celebrate your holiday at that time because then you need to acknowledge everybody else that's not celebrating a holiday at that time. But at the same time, when they have a holiday... Then you need to acknowledge it. You need to celebrate it as well because you should be going along with that holiday too. It's not a two-way street. It should be. We can celebrate our holiday. They can celebrate their holiday. We respect theirs. They respect ours. They let us have our holiday. We let them have their holiday. We just go about our business and we do our own thing. And we don't really care what anybody else is doing. Or we can even venture out and celebrate it to a degree by respecting it and understanding more of it so we can be a little more cultured and have a little more fun with it. I'm okay with that, too. I would love to learn more about Hanukkah. I would love to learn more about Ramadan. I would love to learn more about these things. I'm not going to celebrate them, but I would like to understand them, and I will respect individuals who practice those holidays. 
Why? Because I'm not a bigoted jerk. So why is it okay for the progressives to come down on Christmas? Why is it okay for the progressives to come down on Thanksgiving? Why is it okay for the progressives to come down on 4th of July when you should just let us have a holiday? To me, it makes no sense on why we're not even allowed to have ours, but we should respect everybody else when they have theirs. It's very interesting to me. I mean, I read these last year. And I want to read these again this year, and we got to take a break. we got some calls in line, too, I want to take here as soon as we come back from the break. But here's a little teaser for you. This is from the Daily Beast from a couple of years ago. As you know, the Daily Beast, more of a progressive website. The Pilgrims were the original refugees, trying to tie it into current events with refugees still coming to the United States. The Pilgrims were the original refugees. Okay, not the case, but cool. Or they are really truly the case, but the ones that are currently today, quote unquote, refugees aren't necessarily in the same category as the old refugees, but they're going to try and make that assumption. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Also, here's the other headline for you. American Thanksgiving, the pure glorification of racist barbarity. (laughs) The Thanksgiving story is an absolution of the pilgrims whose brutal quest for absolute power in the new world is made to seem both religiously motivated and eminently human. The Mayflower's cultural heirs are programmed to find glory in their own depravity and savagery in the most helpless victims who can only redeem themselves by accepting the inherent goodness of white Americans. If you're white, then boy, oh boy, you're just the problem here. You are the problem with society. You are going to be the mistake. Got some calls in line. Don't go anywhere. We'll get to you as soon as we come back here. Got to take a break. This is The Voice of Reason. Stay here. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. On the Mid-America Network. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason. Happy Wednesday morning. Good pre-Thanksgiving day to you. Hope everyone's having a great morning as you start off the day getting started, getting ready, getting set for the holiday tomorrow. Hopefully you get some time off. I want to hear from you today. It's open lines to you all day long. Coming up in hour number three, by the way, we will have, if you remember a few months ago, there was a competition with the Kat Von D makeup line, and one of our very own local business owners and artists of the area, the Wichita area, applied for that and ended up winning it. And then once Kat Von D found out she was a Trump supporter, removed her from the competition, and she got zero zilch. <laughs> we talked to Gypsy Freeman when it happened. We're going to have her in studio today in the 8 o'clock hour when she uh, now that she's back in town. Looking forward to chatting with her. Uh, But I want to hear from you today on what you're thankful for this year, 2017. What are you thankful for? I can say right off the bat, I am extremely thankful for the family that I have, for the opportunities, for the fact that we actually get to do such a wonderful thing on the radio, the fact that you actually want to listen to me do these shenanigans every morning. I'm very thankful for that. I'm very grateful for that, for the opportunities that we have. We have some, I can't say what we're doing right now and some of the things that are happening with the show, but it is going to explode. And I mean, this show is truly going to explode in the next couple of months. I cannot disclose anything right now between some of the projects that I'm working on, getting ready for the legislative session, and then getting ready for viewership and uh, media outlets and opportunities this show is going to have, along with guests that we're going to be working on as well. Uh, It is going to be massive what we're doing on this show, so stay tuned in. I'm so excited about this, and I am extremely thankful and grateful for that, the fact that we have these opportunities. So thank you for actually wanting to tune into this every single morning and actually listen to my shenanigans and my craziness as we uh, delve into the deep, dark secrets of politics and conservatism on a daily basis. So thank you for that. I am very, very grateful for that this year. 721-8255-316-721. Talk, let's go right to the phones this morning, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? Hey, happy Wednesday. Myron, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm great today. I think I'm close to twins. Hey, well, that's a good day right there. So I, I, did, I was listening. I didn't know if you had fluffed up your pillow enough about all the good things you were going to do, but uh, I'm looking forward to it, even if you are 
almost breaking you back, patting yourself, breaking your <laughs> arm, patting yourself on the back. Well, I'm not, I'm not really patting myself on the back. I'm thanking you, the listeners, for actually like allowing this to happen. I'm really excited. Like I said, I mean, I can't disclose it all, but we're working on some really, yeah. really cool projects. And if, and if it comes true, if it actually happens, then I mean, I, I'm thankful for, I'm grateful for the movement that we've created because we have an opportunity to change what's happening in the state right now because as you know there's a lot of very frustrating things happening in our state government in our communities and some politics and we have an opportunity to change that so i am thankful for that it's not about me i always tell you it's all about you i'm just i'm i'm the catalyst trying to relay that information to you to allow the change to happen well i know there are a number of different stories about what happened at the first thanksgiving yes but i i I think there's two things that i take away from it is uh, this shows what you what happens when you have refugees of a different religion come in because they'll chase you out and enforce their religion upon you, which is kind of what's happening in Europe with their refugees. And I think the native population can be thankful. They didn't wipe us out. We're still here. We are still we, here. We, we may be very few. We may be stuck in terrible places like the Dakotas, but they didn't wipe us out. Well, Sorry, that is true. Now, here's here's what I'll say. I there's a big difference. There's a major difference between the refugees because the, I mean the story is right. The Daily Beast, the story that I read is absolutely right that the pilgrims were refugees looking for religious uh, freedom, looking for a new land, a holy land to be able to come to and practice their religion freely. They were refugees, uh, but it was a completely different situation, a completely different story than the refugees that are trying to come here today. And for them to try and link it, because they're trying to, to of course, link it to to the to the evil white supremacist Republican conservatives that are here in the country trying to block refugees from coming here, which, by the way, isn't the case. Uh, but they're trying to link that in and say that we should be just as open to the refugees coming now as uh, the way the white uh, pilgrims and the refugees came back in the day. Yeah, I just think that uh, allowing refugees of a different religion and different government style, pretty much different everything, it, uh, it's, it's a good warning. It's happening in Europe. We have to be careful that we don't allow refugees here you know the people that came to america were escaping what you know the western europe's you know, the great thing that everybody hates but they were coming here for freedom sure. and a, a refugee who was coming here to take advantage of the freedom of the u.s to worship as they choose without trying to force anyone to Impose on anyone else. Exactly. That's the big difference. They came here to get away from it and to be able to practice freely. Uh, the refugees, some of them, not all of them by any means, because, again, I'm very open. I'm We are the melting pot. I have no problem with refugees coming in, but some of them come in not with the intention to say, oh, thank God I'm away from an oppressor and I'm going to practice the religion that I want to now. But, hey, I want to go and impose my will against anybody else because I want them to be like me, so I'm going to come in and try and uh, impose that onto them. So you're absolutely right. Myron, we got to take a break here, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. Appreciate you calling in. Got some other calls on the line. Don't go anywhere. We'll start off the next uh, segment with you right here. It's a Wednesday. It's pre-Thanksgiving. Let's have a little fun with it. It's a Thanksgiving, baby. Come on. Expand the belly line. That's what it's all about with the friends and the family and the football and everything else. This is The Voice Reason on the Mid-America Network. Stay here. Never shies away from a fight. Just you try it. Oh, I'll try it. Just you try it. You'll feel it when I try it. Oh, I'd like to see you have at it. Would you now? And now's your chance to jump in the ring. Are you insane? Give Andy a call at 316-721-8255. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. 
Welcome back into the Voice of Reason. Yes, right here on the Mid American Network. Appreciate you hanging out with us today. It's a Wednesday. It's the pre Thanksgiving celebration. Let's enjoy it. Let's have a good one here, shall we? I want to hear from you. What are you thankful for this year? What are you excited about? What are you happy about? What are you thankful for this year? And what are your plans? I got multiple questions for you. Your plans, maybe some of the odd recipes that you have for Thanksgiving. I'd love to hear all of it from you. 316-721-8255, 316-721-TALK. Have you heard of the protests happening for Thanksgiving? People not wanting to celebrate it. Uh, so just like, what is it, on Columbus Day, they change it from Columbus Day to Happy uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. Even though, of course, as you know, many of the indigenous people were very angry of their own and ended up doing slaughterings and killings of their own. But nonetheless, we shouldn't remember that. We should forget about that and make them think that they're, everybody's all happy hunky-dory. It's the same that goes with Thanksgiving because it's the white pilgrims, the white refugees that flooded over to the United States or to the Americas and took over the land of the, of the natives and slaughtered them and killed them and drove them back and then took over their land and were just terrible, horrible people. And for us to celebrate a holiday like Thanksgiving, we uh, we are sick individuals ourselves, right? Again, I just ask why people have to live their life in anger the entire time. They would be much happier if they would just let things go sometimes. Uh, Do I really need to sing the Let It Go song from Frozen? Because I will if I need to. This is the way that they live their entire life, nonstop, every single day. Everything's offensive to them because they probably never grew up when they actually had their childhood. Here's a story that I found. Again, I, I teased this last year. But as we do every single year, we have to remind you of this. American Thanksgiving, this is really what they think. And I don't want to bring you down on a Thanksgiving But when you have people throwing a fit, you have to stand up and protect it and defend it. You can't just brush it off because eventually, if they don't hear a counter to these arguments and more people and younger generation individuals and uh, naive individuals who just hear this for the first time, they begin to build momentum. And when you build enough momentum, then you can begin to begin to change things. If the young generation, the young millennials, think about this for a second. This really is not that far fetched. I know I sound like a a, a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist right now, but hear me out. When you have this type of mentality, when you have college professors teaching this, teaching about how you shouldn't respect the Constitution because the Constitution was written by a bunch of white supremacist landowners, when we have Western philosophy and Western European philosophy over here, which means that any other nation and any other culture that moves here, uh, they don't live here appropriately and properly, and we don't tend to them properly because they have to then bend their will and their lifestyles to the way that we live as a Western culture and Western civilization. When you're taught these things, that there's not an absolute truth in any way, shape, or form because everybody has their own mindset, so therefore we should respect it. And that falls in, by the way, to the social issues that we talk about every single day. If you feel like you need to be a different gender, then uh, you need to be offended by any time that someone calls you the wrong pronoun, which is why now you see college universities uh, giving you the pronoun stickers for you to write down the pronouns that which you would like to be referred to as. When you have the identity changes and people want to change your identity and you truly, honestly think that you can change your gender and that you're going to now be a different gender because you injected yourself with hormones and you got plastic surgery done. And therefore now, all of a sudden, you should be part of that group. When you're forcing others to tolerate and accept your different lifestyles rather than just say, I have my different lifestyle, I understand it's a little bit different than anybody else, so I'm not going to expect anybody else to understand it, and I'm just going to go about my business and not make that my full identity, Uh, it falls directly into all of these concepts. Because society is changing drastically today, and when you have college professors teaching this, when you have even high school and middle school classes teaching this, when you have parents teaching this, when parents are teaching their children that you're not an actual gender until you choose which gender that you decide to be when you get old enough to do so, a.k.a. two or three or four or five years old, because now all of a sudden you want to have a gender change or you want to be a different gender, then the parents just respect that. This is what's going to be running the nation in a decade from now. This is what's going to be running the nation two decades from now. This is what's going to be the norm. And it's a very scary thought, is it not? When we're taught that the Declaration of Independence means nothing, when we're taught the Constitution means nothing, when we're taught that Thanksgiving or Christmas or the 4th of July mean absolutely nothing, and a large portion of a generation believes that, 
Where does that leave us when that generation ends up taking over society? Where does that leave us when they're the ones being elected into seats of representation? Where does that lead us when they're the ones governing society, governing as mayors or commissioners or governors or state legislators or even at the federal level? Where does that leave us? Would they ever try to repeal a federal holiday that is Thanksgiving? No, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon by any means. But think about it for a second. If they try and repeal Thanksgiving at the federal level because, oh, you know what, that is not an indigenous respectful holiday uh, because the they were just a bunch of glorified racists and they're, barbar- uh, they're, uh, they're just terrible, horrible human beings and they committed barbarism and we can't be doing this. Oh, we need to repeal Thanksgiving. I guarantee you they would try this without hesitation. If a member of these Antifa movement uh, individuals, <laughs> to put it FCC nicely, uh, got into an elected position some way, shape, or form, they would try this. They've already changed Columbus Day. They've already tried to attack Labor Day. They've already tried to attack Veterans Day. They've already tried to attack the 4th of July. They attack Christmas every single year. Now they're attacking Thanksgiving. And here's the headline again for you. American Thanksgiving, pure uh, a pure glorification of racist barbarity. Nobody but Americans celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> First off, uh, yeah, because it's an American holiday. Come on, guys. I'm special. And it takes a little bit more. You've got to think a little bit through this before we actually start attacking, right? Only Americans celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah, because it happened in America. There may be different Thanksgivings, maybe, but there's a reason that we celebrate Thanksgiving. Just right there, you should dismiss them. It, only the Americans celebrate it. I'm yeah. special. Okay. It's, it, it's reserved by history and the intent on the founders of the supremely white American holiday, the most ghoulish event of the nation's calendar. No Halloween, uh, no Halloween of the imagination can rival the extremists' reality. That was the genesis and remains the legacy of the American Thanksgiving. It is the most loathsome, humanity-insulting day of the year, a pure glorification of racist barbarity. We are thankful for the days, uh, as the days grow nearer, when the almost four-century-old abolitionists uh, will deprived of its reason for being white supremacy. There may be all, uh, then we may all eat and drink in peace and gratitude for the blessings of humanity's deliverance from the rule of evil men. Thanksgiving is much more than a lie. If it were that simple, a historical correction of the record events in 1600s of Massachusetts would suffice to purge the flaw of the national mythology. But Thanksgiving is not just a twisted fable and the mythology it nurtures is itself inherently evil. I say inherently evil. The real-life events, subsequently revised, were perfectly understood at the time of this uh, of this first definitive triumph of the genocidal European project in New England. The near assurance of Native Americans in Massachusetts, and soon thereafter from most of the remainder of the Northern English colonial seaboard, was the true mission of the Pilgrim Enterprise, Act 1 of the American Dream, African Slavery, Act Number 2. <laughs> That's their purpose, right? Yeah. The pilgrims that thought they were traveling elsewhere, that wanted to go for religious freedom, that was getting away from persecution in, in their own homeland in, in, um, in Europe, they came to America not for religious liberty, but for the sole purpose to create racist barbarism, to execute the natives, and then to act to bring over the black slaves. This is literally what they're saying. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. To an extremely naive, ignorant, ridiculous assumption, but many people believe. White America embraced Thanksgiving because a majority of the population uh, glories in the fruits, if not the unpleasant details of the uh, genocide and slavery, and feels on the whole good about their heritage. A cornucopia of privilege and national power. (laughs) Children are taught to identify the good fortune of the pilgrims. It does not match matter that the Native American and African holocausts that flowed from the feast at Plymouth are hidden from the children's version of the story. Kids learn soon enough that Indians were made scarce and Africans became enslaved, but they will also never forget the core message of the holiday, that the pilgrims were good people who could not have purposely set such an evil motion into action. I go back to my original assumption. 
that people that just live their life in anger and hatred all the time need to get a life. Get a life! Because this, that even if you believe in this, how does this help society in any way, shape, or form? Is this the same mentality of like the Black Lives, the extreme Black Lives Matter movement that says that we need to all apologize for our white privilege today? Is this the same mentality that says that if you're just white by, uh, I mean, this is this is racism, by the way, pure, absolute racism, that if you're white, then you're inherently evil, then you have bad intentions, that you glorify your white supremacy of a nation over other individuals, and that that's just the why, the reason that you celebrate Thanksgiving. If you believe this then you have serious mental issues. And I'm not saying that to try and knock somebody or try and uh, hate somebody or trying to attack somebody in any way, shape, or form. It's just fact. If you don't understand true history, if you don't understand it, and this is why history, by the way, in class, whether it's in K-12, through which is extremely important, whether it's in higher education, whether it's just studying on your own, whether it's understanding, whether it's actually learning, whether it's going traveling and learning about the monuments and the history and learning about different places. If you don't understand it, then you're going to see this. If you don't understand it, then you're going to be swooed in to an understanding like that, which is completely absurd. I know that I'm trying to, I'm apparently killing your buzz when it comes to Thanksgiving, but this is what people believe. And I guarantee you tomorrow on Thanksgiving, you will see people protest. You will see people get upset. You will see people on social media all over the place, or maybe in the community that say that they don't respect it. They're going to be the same ones, by the way, that go to the store to the grocery store that are upset that stores are actually trying to close on Thanksgiving or that workers want to spend time with their family, they're the ones that will go to the store and not give a rat's you-know-what about the work of anybody else and them have to go to work on a holiday like this because, eh, you know what, I don't celebrate it, so therefore you shouldn't either. So you should bend to my will, and if I want to go shopping on Thanksgiving Day, you should accommodate me and be open to that because the world is all about me. I'm selfish because I'm a liberal. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. right here on the Mid-American Network, wrapping up hour number one. Already goes by way too fast here, but it's a pre-Thanksgiving. It's a Wednesday. Let's enjoy it here, shall we? It's a hashtag, I guess you could say wackadoo to Wednesday. I'm going to say a pre-Thanksgiving day. Why? Because, well, I'm really excited about tomorrow. 316-721-8255, 316-721-TALK. We do have the Facebook Live feed going on right now if you want to chime in there. We do have the uh, messaging you can send on Facebook on the Voice Reason page, KQAM page, on the Twitter, which I should probably bring up that I don't usually get on, but you can do that at Who's Your Reason. I really need to start using that a little more frequently as more people are actually almost on there as they are on Facebook. Uh, as you can tell, as you can tell, I'm a very politically oriented person. Just about everything that I do in some way, shape, or form revolves around politics. My wife sometimes gets driven crazy because that's all I talk about. That's my niche. That's what I do. Sports every once in a while. I can get into, as you know, the and uh, the MMA and UFC fighting. I'm a big fan of that. Conor McGregor's the man, uh, which is going to come back into UFC, by the way. I am a NASCAR fan. And uh, I've kind of gone out of that a little bit after my racers kind of retired and left. So haven't been into that as much. I have not watched a single NFL game this entire season. I don't think I watched one last year either, but it wasn't because of a protest, just because I'm just whatever. I'll watch it if it's on, if I have time. And if not, then oh, well, it's no nothing off my back. I'm not major into sports. I do like philosophy. I do like the astronomy stuff. I like politics. That's that's my thing. Uh, When I used to go and I haven't because there's no family around this area. Most of my all my family actually now is back in Ohio. My parents had actually just moved back there a few months ago. But uh, when we would go to the family reunions as a kid, I would uh, I would talk politics, and a lot of the family did not like that because nobody I don't know where I got it. Nobody else in my family, other than my my wife's side of the family, other than, on my side the large family gatherings, nobody wanted to talk politics. Nobody's politically oriented. They have some of their opinions a little bit, 
But that's about it. They don't usually talk politics, even on a daily basis, not just at the family reunions. So me coming in, <laughs> a little more brass and crass than most of them, I would come in and start talking politics. And it would uh, they just kind of laugh and chuckle at me. Okay, Andy, well done. Except for one, my great-grandmother who just passed away earlier this year. She was, what, 94, 95? Uh, she would be the only one that would talk politics with me. And we would have a great time doing so. And she would come to me and actually talk about things that I had not even heard of yet because she's on it, baby. She knew about the stuff happening as it happened. So if you're getting ready for your family and you want to talk and you want to chat and you want to socialize and maybe some family members that you have not met with in a while, I'm actually going back, as you know, I'm going to be traveling back to Ohio the second week of December. And I'm really excited to do so because it's the first time that I have been back to Ohio in about 10 years. Uh, One thing that I am relatively excited about was the fact that part of the family I get to see uh, is one of them being, of course, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and one of my cousins who is a Bernie Sanders left-wing progressive. And I believe that he will be around at that time, so I get to see him. And it's the first time that I've seen him in probably 10, 12 years, which is cool, but i got to have some fun with this. I really have to enjoy this a little bit. So if you're enjoying the family and maybe you have met with somebody that you haven't seen in a long time and you're getting ready to visit with all of them, have some fun with it. Now, don't cause, you know, a big brawl in the middle of the dinner by any means, but have a little fun with it because that's just my personality. I know a lot of people are going to be like, don't even talk about it. Don't even worry. And I was going to read it. I don't have time right now. We're going to have to do it in the second hour. But the five things to talk about during Thanksgiving Instead of politics and a politically heated divisive year that was the election, whether you love Donald Trump or you hate Donald Trump and a politically divisive year with all these uh, sexual allegations, which, by the way, when did we stop saying harassment instead of harassment? I started hearing that in the news all all the time now. Sexual harassment. The hell is harassment? It's as far as I remember, since I was a kid, it was harassment. Just saying. But now we need to change it because now it's harassment. We're going to we're going to discuss sexual harassment, uh, but there's five things that you can talk about other than politics. And here's what they say: identify people. Number one, first off, that you need to avoid, <laughs> because well, we don't like anybody else with differing opinions. Avoid politics entirely. Think of other topics to discuss. Limit the alcohol. Ha! That's funny. And do not address the elephant in the room, which of course is the politics. Just enjoy the day. And you can enjoy wonderful things like football, television, the weather, shared memories, each other. And if you can't avoid it, they say, if you do have to discuss those evil, terrible politics, maybe set a time limit or turn it into a game with questions. (laughs) See how well that goes when you start asking that progressive. Here's a question for you. Do you understand Economics 101? See what they say for that one. This is your show. It's time to speak up, speak out, speak loud, speak proud, speak the truth, and always speak some reason. Everybody on the western part of the state and beyond, happy Thanksgiving to you. We'll be back on Friday here in Wichita. Hour number two is coming up. Stay here. It's time for reason. Yes, yes, and yes. They should be scared. They should be absolutely petrified of the fact that we are talking about trying to change the Constitution because this is their loophole. Now, what we have to do, Republicans, you have to rally around one singular movement. You have to create the amendment in order to change the suitable funding phrasing in the Constitution. You have to be able to do it. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Morning to you. Welcome into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side, KQAM. It is a Wednesday. It's a pre Thanksgiving. Have you been training? Have you been practicing? Have you been expanding the waistline and training for the day that is tomorrow? Because it is a very, very important day. Look, there are people out there right now that are thinking about the environmentalist animal rights movement to where you should not be eating. <laughs> I, I posted the video on my social media. I should have uh, found a way. I, there wasn't any audio really with it except for like really sad like Sarah McLaughlin kind of, kind of music. So I really couldn't play it on the radio. But I did share it on Facebook on, and on the social media to where if uh, the, the PETA, the animal rights activists protesting the eating of Thanksgiving turkeys for Thanksgiving. And they had like a, a human-sized 
made turkey looking thing, you know, in its position, ready to be basted. And an individual was wearing a, a jumpsuit and was sitting next to them in the same position, looking ready to be basted. And it said something of the sort with the sign behind them of all lives matter or, you know, the, the animals are the same as humans or whatever the stupid thing said. And it's very comical to watch what they have to do to protest because, again, people just don't know how to let things go and let us enjoy the holidays. Welcome into it. Eight minutes past the hour, 721-8255, 721-TALK. Lots to get to this hour as it is pre-Thanksgiving. No politics per se today except for maybe the hol- the Thanksgiving-themed politics, which we like to have fun with. It's a special holiday episode, and I want to hear from you. Coming up in hour number three. We will have some fun as well. Uh, I'm excited to get her in studio. We chatted with her over the phone a few months ago, if you remember. Gypsy Freeman, she is the local artist and uh, locally here from the Wichita area, travels all around the country doing different things, uh, different projects, and uh, really excited to get her in studio. If you remember, she had applied for a, 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 she won it. It was a competition from Kat Von D with a, a new makeup line and some kind of competition for that. Uh, to where she could uh, submit her stuff and she could win a cash prize and then be able to travel out to Kat Von D for the uh, grand opening of her new makeup line and won it until Kat Von D realized that the that she was a Trump supporter and a Republican. And as soon as that came came out and came public, then they ended up removing her from the competition after she had already won it. So we talked to her about that. She's going to be joining us in studio in the third hour. It's um, really excited for that uh, coming up here in just a little bit. But until then, I want to hear from you. What's on your mind today? It's open lines to you. Tell me about your Thanksgiving. Tell me about your plans. Tell me about maybe the fun recipes that you're working on. I want to hear from you today. It's open lines on a pre-Thanksgiving today. 728-255-721. And talk with that. Let's kick off hour number two with a phone call, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? Hi, Andy. It's Pam. Good morning, Pam. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. I had to share this with you. Yes. When you brought PETA up, some friends of my husband, he's a big hunter. He's bow hunted for 50 years. Ooh, yes. And Someone gave him this beautiful camouflage hunting hat, and it said PETA across the front, and underneath it said people eating tasty animals. Tasty animals. I love it. That is one of the <laughs> best ones you could possibly have. Uh, because, And now what he should do is he should wear that while he walks into a Whole Foods. Uh, oh, yeah. Now see, I never there you go. That. Have him wear that hat yeah. while he walks into a Whole Foods and see what the reaction looks like. <laughs> the only trouble is I can't get him to walk into a Whole Foods. <laughs> I'm right there with you. It's actually a funny story. My wife, there's this, there's a few things that she likes to get from Whole Foods, just a couple of things. And every once in a while when I'm running around, she'll say, hey, can you stop and grab this for me? And I had the hardest time walking into a Whole Foods. I just cannot do it. I cannot I do it. Uh, you walk in and you just smell the hippies. You're like that's that's all you you just. I don't know if it's the smell of the grocery store or the hippies, but you just smell it and it. Just, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh uh-uh. uh Well, these aren't hippies. They're yuppies. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. I used to be an old hippie. Well, but see, here's the thing: the old hippies. That you know, that's today. The old hippies are the conservatives because they're still the ones that like you. They you don't like the government. You're against the establishment. Today's hippies are more of, like you said, the yuppies to where they embrace the big government in the nanny state, which is completely against the original message of the hippies back in the day. Yes, this is true. So, you know, it's okay to be the old school kind of hippie because that okay. actually, you know, was against the establishment. Now they embrace the establishment. Okay. I feel better now. Yeah, there you go. See, that's right. But no, have him walk into a Whole Foods with that hat on, and I would love to be able to see it. Do a Facebook Live of that, and we could see the response. That'd be fantastic. That might, that might be the only way I can get him to walk into one. That's outstanding. I love it. What do you guys got planned for Thanksgiving? Do you, got, do you have any fun, unique recipes that you do? You know, we are going to go hunting. Yes. For Thanksgiving. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we'll probably... Who knows what we'll probably end up having a ham sandwich or something. I was gonna say, are you planning on tur- <laughs> is it turkey hunting that you're doing? No, um, he's deer hunting. Deer, okay, okay. Yeah, 
it's bow hunting season. So. Yeah, I'm boy, I miss okay. hunting. It's been a long time. I may have to jump on board with you guys one time to go hunting. Yeah, it's, no kidding. It's been so no long, kidding. and I love I love bow and rifle hunting. Uh, it's actually bow is the last thing that I that I went hunting with as a kid in Ohio. We would go. Uh, rifle hunting and i use the muzzleloader in colorado we would go elk hunting with bow and that was a blast oh so. man that's what i used when i lived in colorado that's what i used to do there'd be a bunch of people come some friends from kentucky would come out and we'd go down by steamboat springs and yeah oh, there you go man it was that's it a good was time nice there. well you you're living the ultimate thanksgiving by going out and hunting your own food for thanksgiving like they did back in the day so kudos yeah, to you guys on right. that that's going to be a lot of fun uh but yeah happy thanksgiving to you guys i, I appreciate the, the call in and you guys uh, have fun hunting tomorrow hope you can get something yeah like ted nugent said we're gonna kill it and grill it kill it and grill it maybe that's what it's all about <laughs> i love it pam happy thanksgiving to you we'll talk Thanks, to you guys Andy. later your family too hey thank you very much i appreciate that pam happy thanksgiving to you guys that's a uh, there you go that's a good thing to do for that's a good tradition to have thanksgiving you know what the traditional thanksgiving going out hunting the food i would go turkey hunting and find the bird and then be able to uh defeather it and cook it on thanksgiving day how cool would that be for a traditional thanksgiving meal honey guess what we're doing next year yeah let's go back to the phone cheers shall we Seven two one eight two five five seven two one. talk good morning what's your name Hey, this is uh, Dan. Hey, good morning, Dan. How are you, sir? Good, sir. I just uh, happen to hear that you are an MMA fan. Oh, I love the UFC and the MMA. Absolutely. Well, December 1st, Thackerville, Oklahoma, Bellator 189. Ooh. Local man David, the caveman Rickles, uh-huh. is going to be fighting live on Bellator on Spike. <laughs> That's going to be fantastic. Oh, I didn't realize it was going to be on Spike. I had heard of the fight. We've actually had Dave the Caveman Rickles on the show a couple of times. Uh, we got yep. to, to we got to have him on our sports station over on KGSO a couple of times. Great, great guy. Yeah, fantastic. Guy. And uh, absolutely, that's that would be really fun. I'm going to have to go watch. Just I did not realize it was going to be on Spike. Day. Yeah, I just ran into him the other day, and uh, he lost his. It, sorry, his last fight fell through. He didn't lose it, sure. and he just got a replacement fight. So everybody, tune in and watch him. Also. You're hating on Whole Foods, man. I can't have it. They've got the <laughs> best meat counter anywhere in town. Well, the best bacon you can find is at Whole Foods. The best bacon, really. And it's not like oh, one of those, like, uh, it's, uh, what do you see online, like the, I don't know, the fat-free or the vegan bacon or whatever, the no, tofu bacon no, kind of man. stuff. It's it's legit if bacon. You want big, fatty, thick, super thick-cut bacon, go to Whole Foods. Mm, okay. They even have bacon ends. And if you haven't cooked with bacon ends, it's better than butter, my friend. Bacon in, I've never even heard yeah. of that. Exactly. You're uh, missing out on life. I'm missing I, out I on life. And break, I just had to call and break the news to you. You're breaking you the norm. My news. my head is blown. You see the commercial where like their head's blown with the purple mist that comes out of it? That's what's happening yeah. right now because now exactly. you're you're enticing me to check out Whole Foods now. Oh, it's, it's seriously <laughs> the best meat counter you'll find. That's good to know. Good to know. I love it. Dan, happy Thanksgiving to you, my friend. Appreciate the Back call. To you. Hey, right. appreciate that. All right. Uh, 721 8255. Mind blown. Didn't know that Whole Foods had thick cut, nice bacon and bacon ends. The, the, a butter bacon? Come on. Come on. I didn't even know this was possible. Talk about being thankful for something. 721 8255 721 talk. If you want to chime in, what kind of recipes do you have? I got to say, I don't know about any kind of special recipes. I might have to have the wife call in and talk about what she does with the turkey because she wrote, she soaks it in wine, which I think is fantastic, and, and cooks it all, or at least lets it soak in brine all day, and then cooks it tomorrow. So that's going to be kind of fun. She's been doing that the last couple of years. It's fantastic. Now, is it, when it comes to, there's a recipe that my grandma used to do, and she still does it. I just haven't seen her in 10 years. Uh, but she makes a, uh, a graham cracker pudding. And I don't even remember the recipe of it, but it has it's it's pretty much like a heavy whipping cream. It's like a it's almost like a it's a pudding, but it's got pineapple in it and it's got graham crackers in it. And it's really delicious. I'll have to get the recipe for that. By the way, speaking of that, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this or not, but KQAM, uh, either for the end of the year or during around Super Bowl time uh, beginning of next year, we're going to be doing a KQAM recipe book potentially so uh, start thinking about some of the fun recipes that you do either for Thanksgiving or Christmas or uh, even snacks for the Super Bowl, that kind of thing. And we may be doing a cake. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about that or not, but we will be doing something of that sort coming up the beginning of the year, maybe potentially. Uh, hint, hint, wink, wink. Uh, so come up with some fun recipes. But I'm trying to think of some fun ones that we do. And other than like, I'm a big chip dip fan. I mean, I love my salsa. I love my dip. 
And that's what I like to snack on, along with the turkey, of course, and the Thanksgiving, the mashed potatoes and the stuffing and, and all that. The, the dips are what get me. And if you find a fun uh, queso dip or if you do like a bean and cheese dipper, I even like just the basic uh, sour, uh, I'm sorry, cream cheese and salsa. And you just mix it all up and you just dip your t- chips in that. To me, that's just delicious. That's what I could eat all day long. So uh, if you have anything like that, I'd love to hear from you today. A little bit fun for Thanksgiving today. When we come back, I do want to get into something that is a little troubling. As we talked about last hour with some of the uh, political messages coming from Thanksgiving and the, and the progressives trying to make it into a white supremacist barbarian kind of day to where we came over with the intent to want to wipe out natives and, and impose our power of white supremacy uh, during Thanksgiving, which is completely absurd. There's a new movement today about children and the the push that you have to make your children want to be friendly i mean like you're talking your little children your two three four year olds that are walking around and having some fun wanting them to be friendly with the family when they come over to visit for the holidays it is a little concerning it is a little weird that we're even discussing this but apparently it's a big thing now that we need to address. So we'll talk about that when we come back. Your thoughts and calls as well. What do you do for Thanksgiving? Be the ultimate Thanksgiving. Enjoy it. Have a little fun. This is The Voice of Reason on KQAM. Stay here. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on The Big Talker KQAM. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker, KQAM. It's a Wednesday. It's the free Thanksgiving holiday. Let's celebrate. Time to expand the waistline just a tidbit. Because <laughs> that's what we like to do. Rick. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Rick Everett hanging in studio with me here for a bit. Uh, good morning, sir. Hey, Happy man. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving Eve to you, my friend. And you've got uh, you've got the wife unit at home brining the turkey you said it's a great time getting great time getting the tryptophan ready for consumption absolutely yeah that's that chemical in the turkey that makes makes you all sleepy sleepy. yeah and i like allegedly i like sleep so i like sleep a lot that is a very good thing uh 721-8255-721-talk if you want to join in i want to hear about your thanksgiving tradition we've heard from a couple and get this here i think the most thanksgiving traditional thing you could do go hunting for turkey on Thanksgiving morning, get the turkey, defeather the turkey, and cook the turkey that day for Thanksgiving. How cool would that be? Now that's that's fresh. But you got to do it with a bow and arrow. Okay. <laughs> or with a muzzleloader. <laughs> or I say go and tackle it and just you know use your bare hands to do, do the He Man thing. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, so I mentioned that my wife uses wine. She brines the turkey in a in a bottle of red wine. Right. And the big jug, of the right. Carlo Rossi, it's wonderful. The sweet red, it's great stuff. And then you put it and soak it in and all that stuff. But you can cook it with scotch as well. Oh, you can do a lot of things with scotch. You can do a lot of things with scotch. <laughs> well, see, and here you go. Here uh, is the opportunity yeah. for you. And get get your thoughts on this, Rick, as we you know, can cook a turkey with scotch and whiskey. Right. Step one, you got to go get the turkey. Right? Yes, yeah, definitely. Obviously. Step two, you got to take a drink of whiskey. Well, yeah. I mean, as you're cooking, you got to drink as well. Number three, you got to put the turkey in the oven. That would call for another drink, I think. Well, t- step four, take another two sips of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Set the degrees at 375 ovens. 375 ovens. And then take three more whiskeys of yeah, a drink. Three more. <laughs> Turn the oven on sometimes. Take four whisk of a drinky. There you go. Then you turk the basty. Step 10 is you'll whiskey another bottle of get. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody. You're not going to be as think as no, people drunk you it's, are. It's going to be a good time. Then you stick a turkey in the thermostat. <laughs> then you glass yourself another pour of whiskey. One more. One more. Why not? Then you bake the whiskey for four hours. <laughs> By 14, you take the oven out of the turkey. Well, Sometimes. Go. That's what you got. By 15, you got to take the oven out of the turkey. Wait a second. By 16, you take the turkey up off the floor and pick it up. <laughs> Don't forget to, uh, oh, yeah. to stir, uh, stir the toughie. Then you got to turk the carvy because, uh, hey. <laughs> by 18, you get yourself another scuttle of botch. Yes. Uh-huh. By 19, you set the tablet and pour yourself a glass of turkey. <laughs> 
I hey. hope Stig Grecklein isn't listening. Uh, then by step 20, you just bless the thing and pass and eat out. <laughs> That is a good recipe that I follow every single year. It's a good tradition. Oh my goodness there gracious! Are. What's your tradition for Thanksgiving? What do you What do you work on there? You know, I I'm I'm traditional. I like the turkey. There I like go. the ham. Uh, I like going uh, to the in laws and the outlaws. And my my dish I've always kind of like my standby is the green bean casserole you know the really the green beans with the cream of mushroom soup and the french's dried onions on top See, i'm not and, a, i don't like onions so that's uh, i've never been a big fan of the 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 green bean casserole well, it's not like oniony oniony yeah, it's it's, it's uh, crunchy it's a and what's your favorite dessert let me ask you that uh, see i was just saying that before the break i'm a big fan of just the dips i love my 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 salsa dips and my quesos and i'm talking and, dessert andy that is my dessert i'm oh. not a big sweet person really? i'm really not i'll maybe eat one slice of pumpkin pie and that's about it. I'm not a sweet. I've never been a sweeper. I don't care for candy. I don't care for really ice cream. I don't care for really popcorn. I, I asked you one for, question. I, I don't. You're I going just, on this tirade. I just. I'm not a big fan of that stuff. My snack would be to have a little more turkey or to have some chips and salsa. Okay, that's what I like. Okay, I never really like sweets. Pecan pie here. I do like pecan pie and pe. Andy, Jiminy Crickets, that's a dessert, dude. I guess I don't think about it because, well, I never really have it. I don't even remember the last time I had pecan pie. Pecan pie is the bomb. And with homemade whipped cream, now there's a switch for you. A lot of people don't use whipped cream on mm, pecan pie, there but you go. I like it. You with like homemade whipped cream. Pumpkin pie, always good. Pumpkin always pie, good. see, yeah. Um, I, I guess well, a side dish. Let's ask about side dishes. Like for me, the little finger food things. Deviled eggs, bar none. Yeah, see, I'm a deviled eggs kind of guy. That's, eggs. And I'll be making that tomorrow. I love making my deviled eggs. Now, here's a question back to your childhood. Yes. Did you ever dress up all your fingers with olives and then wave at people? No, because I don't like olives. You are just not fun. <laughs> I don't care. No, I used to do that with the bugles. Well, bugles will work. There you yeah. go. See, you do the bugle thing. And with, bugles are kind hello, of a Clarice. Thanksgiving food. They're shaped like that yeah, basket the cornucopia thing. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hello, Clarice. Do you like my fingers? <laughs> Clarice. Hello, Clarice. Nice dress, Senator. Yes. Uh, see, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I used to, I guess you could do that to the bugles. That'd be a nice little Thanksgiving treat there. Eat the bugles with the little fingers. Well, yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. My, now, Isla, my daughter, she loves doing the whole olive thing with her fingers. Well, there. Good. She loves olives. See, I'm glad that apple fell a little further from the tree. Yeah, a little bit. That came from bit. Tiffany's side, That didn't it? it did. That the, it did. The olive yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, they got them Very into good. that thing. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving bottom of the hour news coming up. When we come back, we'll talk about how you should have your young children treat the relatives during Thanksgiving time. Also, an environmentally friendly Thanksgiving. Can you handle it? Plus, get this. Can you do a gluten-free, kosher, no soy, vegan, organic, low acid, no dairy Thanksgiving? We'll talk about that when we come back. It's time for some common sense, sanity, and reason. You can't handle the truth! This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. This portion of the Voice of Reason brought to you by Network Consultants, business owners. You may have the day off, maybe you don't, but listen up. I know you got your computers, you got your software, you got your communication and your network. Maybe you got a network printer. Maybe you got shared files. Maybe you got different programs that you run. Maybe it's even just your QuickBooks to be able to hold all your information and finances for your business. You cannot let something happen to them and lose all your information. That would be very, very bad. That'd be very bad. Network consultants can help you with that. You don't want it hacked. You don't want it to collapse. You don't want it to fail. They can work on your uh, firewalls and sonic walls, database safety, security, network communication, VPN, backup solutions, even getting you set up on the cloud which many people are doing nowadays. They love working with small to medium businesses. They know the importance of how you need to run as a small business. And with everything that you have on, again, maybe with the multiple computers, the shared files, the different programs, the software, the network that needs to communicate properly, it costs a lot of money if it ends up going haywire and it stops working for you as opposed to actually maintaining it in the first place. Call them now. You'll get a free network analysis 
They can come out, visit your business, review your system, help you any way that you can, even help guide to manage your own network. You can do it yourself. They'll give you the tools and the resources to do so. All you got to do is ask. They do have month-to-month plans available. You do not have to do long-term agreements. All you got to do is tell them that I sent you and give them a call. 316-201-4624. 316-201-4624 or network-consultants.com. Again, network-consultants.com. All right, 721-8255, 721-TALK. I want to hear from you today on Thanksgiving, the pre-Thanksgiving holidays you're getting ready. One thing that is a pet peeve of mine I do have to get into for just a second, and I know some people do this. I don't understand why. It drives me nuts. Holidays, and I, I miss the good old days back in the day when holidays, all businesses were closed. All business, gas stations, grocery stores, everything, convenience stores, retail stores, everything was closed. <clears throat> I miss that because Thanksgiving is the day you spend with the family. You don't need to go shopping. If you are going to the grocery store and buying your Thanksgiving food on Thanksgiving Day, then you are the problem with society. I'm sorry. I know some people forget things. Oh, well, we need to learn to be able to plan and prep a little bit better. We don't do that anymore. It's all the impulse buys. It's all the uh, not thinking long term or prepping ourselves any longer. And I'm guilty of it as well, I'll admit. But come on, Thanksgiving Day, you do not need to go to the store. I wish, wish, wish that stores would shut down on Thanksgiving. I wish stores would shut down during the holiday. Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving. Shut down. You don't need to be open. And please, please, please do not go to the grocery store to look for the gravy on Thanksgiving Day. If you missed out and you didn't get it at that time, then oh well, too bad, so sad. I'm, I Drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. I know now some restaurants are open. People like to go to the restaurant once in a while for Thanksgiving. I guess that's you know a little bit different-ish. But... I don't know. I, I've always been one where the retail stores, the grocery stores, you need to be shut down. You do not need to be open on Thanksgiving Day. You do not need to be open on Christmas Day. And people that go to the store on those days, it drives me nuts to why we need to uh, why we need to pander to them because they couldn't think ahead of time, knowing that it was going to be a holiday where they wanted to spend time and uh, uh, spend time quality time with the family and friends. So please don't go to the store on Thanksgiving Day and stores. Hopefully you're dead, so that way next year the business will look at actually closing the doors and allowing you to actually spend time with your family. So agree, disagree with me? I don't know. That's a pet peeve of mine. That's been something that's bugged me every single year when you uh, you know see the stores open or you hear about the the Black Friday sales at the beginning of the, the day that we're thankful for things. We're starting the Black Friday sales and shopping to go and do those things and then not actually enjoy what the holiday is meant to be for is being thankful for the little bit that we may have. Seven two one eight two five five seven two one talk. I do want to get into. Uh, I don't know where this came from. This is according to the Charlotte Observer out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Don't push girls into hugging relatives at holidays, according to the Girl Scouts. Now you know that we've talked about the Girl Scouts before on the show. But during the holidays, you have all the friends and the family coming over and maybe, you know, Aunt Susie, who you haven't seen in five years, is there. And you have your little four-year-old or five-year-old or six-year-old. Oh, hey, Aunt Susie's here. Go say hi and go give her a hug. You shouldn't do that anymore, apparently, according to the Girl Scouts. The Girl Scouts of America, nearly 16,000 members in the Charlotte area alone, is advising parents not to force their daughters to hug relatives during the holidays, prompting a fierce debate on social media. In a lengthy essay on GirlScouts.org, the nonprofit points out that the family get-togethers can be a time, quote, when your daughter gets the wrong idea about consent and physical affection. The warning comes at times when the nation has seen a number of high-profile revelations of men sexually harassing, not harassing, but actually harassing and assaulting women in the workplace, with some cases dating back decades. Have you, in, uh, have you ever insisted, oh, Uncle Joe just got here, go give him a big hug? Or Auntie Susie got here with a nice toy, go give her a big kiss? When you were worried your child might not offer affection on her own. If yes, you might want to reconsider the urge to do that in the future. I don't understand. I don't get it. And maybe someone can help me understand this. If you didn't tell the children, now usually the only person that you tell that to would be what the young kid, right? Under eight years old, maybe, because normally then after that, by the age, that by the time that they're a little bit older, they see who's coming in the door. They're really excited. And they go and greet them themselves. But to acknowledge them is the entire point. When they're three, four, five, six, seven, eight years old, 
they're off busy. They're off running around playing with their friends and the cousins and and the other family members, brothers and sisters, and they're doing their own thing. And oh, you know what? The the relative came here. You haven't seen them in a long time. Hey, go reacquaint yourself with them. Go give them a hug. I tell that to my daughter. I'm going to continue to tell that to my daughter. We go to a family dinner. Hey, grandma's here. Go give grandma a hug for crying out loud. But according to the Girl Scouts of America, by uh, advocating and forcing your daughter to uh, do these acts by going and giving relatives. Now, if there's the creepy guy that walked in, hello, Clarice, and you don't know who it is, you're not going to say, oh, go give the hobo a hug now, little girl. You're not going to do that. But if it's the aunt, if it's the grandma, if it's the uncle, if it's a family member, then you're going to say, hey, you know what? Go give them a hug. Go say hi to them because they're family. And I don't know whether to take this as the sense that you're just being overly protective and we're taking helicopter parenting to the entirely next level or to the point to where we literally think that we have creepers in our own family and we don't want our children to associate with them. I don't know which one it is. And with how many sexual harassments. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know when it changed from harassments to harassments, but sexual harassment cases that are happening right now uh, that maybe we do have the creepy uncle that we don't want to associate with now. And there's more of them in the family. I don't know. But really, now we're going to be more concerned about teaching your children to go and give the family member a hug because it's family time during the holidays. Instead, we shouldn't do that. And if they want to go to meet them themselves, that four-year-old's going to think for themselves and they're going to be really, really smart to say, hey, Uncle Bob's here. I'm going to go give him a hug and say hi. They're not going to do that. So you teach them how to be respectful to family members when they come by saying, go give them a hug. Go give Aunt Susie a hug. Not go give the hobo in the corner we don't know at the family dinner a hug. It's not going to happen. So it started off a Twitter war, a a social media war, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Is this something that you taught your children? When they were children, now I'm not talking about teenagers, maybe even teenagers, because, dude, I don't want to get up off the couch. Dude, I'm playing video games. Go give your grandma a hug. I I mean, maybe you teach them, I don't know. But as a parent, do you tell your children to go give Aunt Susie a hug? Aunt Bob, uh, uh, Aunt Bob, well, nowadays, who knows? Uncle Bob, (laughs) Uncle Bob a hug. Do you do that for the holidays? Have you done that? Teaching your children to go and respect the family members and go acknowledge that they're there and say hi to them because you want to teach them and instill in them the proper values of being family oriented, of being loving and being caring and taking care of your family. And say, hey, yeah, go give them a hug. Go say hi to them. Go tell them thank you for getting you a gift. Go say thank you for them showing up. I really don't see a problem with this. And if we're in the point in time in society to where that is a problem, then we seriously need to reevaluate what's going on in society today, do we not? Good golly. 721-855-721 talk. Let's go to the phones here as they're lining up, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? Hello, Andrew. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, my friend? Doing good, man. For Pete's sake, bro, folks are going to do what they're going to do. And if anybody stops to think about this and not understand (laughs) that it's a load of male bovine fecal matter, (laughs) they need they need to go see somebody. Okay, they're little kids. It's they're little kids. It's in the public realm. It's in your house. You know, now if your uncle's going to take your little daughter away and, you know, off to the closet or something. Well, yeah, I mean, or she's crying and he's dragging her off. Uh, hello, do something. But right. this is ridiculous, man. I know it's this This stupid. takes, this takes. Uh, I, I don't know if it's, I don't even know what it is, whether it's helicopter parenting, whether it's P, a political correctness, whether it's uh, the the fear, whether it's instilling fear into your children, saying that any time that you're going to show affection to somebody, they're going to sexually harassment at you uh, or they're going to take advantage of you. I don't know what the scare is here other than, to me, it's, again, instilling fear into our children it's, that everyone's out to harm you and get you. Andy, it's a bunch of elitist morons trying to tell you what to do when they don't know what to do themselves. Hello, look at the shape we're in, bro. Mm-hmm. That's that, <laughs> that's that's saying you're right. That's the only thing that I can think of. Hey, I appreciate the call, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving to yep. you. Hey, appreciate that. 7218255. You're right. I mean, these are the elites that uh that are trying to they live their life in fear. They're the ones that need to live in the safe space. They're the ones that need to live in their own little bubble that are offended by everybody. The ones that wear the pronoun name tags to to be referred to as a certain pronoun so they're not offended when you call them the wrong thing. They're the ones that live their life in fear their entire day in and day out. And now they're trying to instill that fear and that offensiveness 
into our young children saying, don't go give Aunt Susie a hug when she walks in the door because, well, you know, in a time of sexual harassment all across the nation, then you're teaching your young girls to show affection whenever they try and offer something because they go deeper into the story and say that later on down the road, when a guy buys them a steak, then they feel obligated to uh, do physical things with them. Because you taught them that once someone does something nice, you go and give them affection and give them physical hugs or kisses or whatever. So now they're, they're trying to stretch this to the point to where if you do that as a young child, then when they grow up, they feel like it's obligated for them to take it to the next level when a guy tries to date them and buys them a steak dinner, and therefore they have to show the, ref- the affection in return. That's what they're trying to get at here. And the Girl Scouts of America teaching what kind of values to our daughters i don't know whether this is taking it to that next level and being the extremist or whether i don't know i I don't know what this is let's go back to the phones here shall we good morning what's your name this is gary hey good morning gary how are you oh i'm doing great andy happy thanksgiving to you happy thanksgiving to you my friend oh thank you very much i just want to say uh, we're guilt together and i think you should write all the thanksgiving laws and Christmas laws. I agree. <laughs> there should be no stores open at all, uh, only for emergency purposes, man. See, that's the thing. That's I'm right there with you. I appreciate that because I don't like the fact that people feel like just because they didn't plan ahead – then they can go. They have the right to go to the store, make someone else spend time away from their family for the holidays because they couldn't play inappropriately. It drives me nuts. Well, on a real quick anecdotal note, Andy, uh, sure. when I was uh, about three or four, uh, my grandmother on my father's side came from Illinois to visit. First time I'd ever seen her, mm-hmm. and lady was frail, and and she'd lived a hard life, and she had very dark eyes, and so when she. Uh, <laughs> When it came time for her to leave, of course, I was told the same, you know, go give your grandma a hug and kiss, and I was afraid of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, again, why some of them forced you when you were a kid to say, hey, go give them a hug. They're about ready to leave, or, oh, they just walked in the door, or, oh, they got you a birthday present or a Christmas present. Go say thank you and give them a hug. And, yeah, some of the family members, when you're a kid, uh, they may seem intimidating to you or scary. So that forcement kind of lets you warm up to them a little bit because once you gave them a hug, then you realize that they weren't going to bite your head off. It's going to be okay. Yeah, it didn't kill me. You know, I, I wasn't damaged <laughs> <laughs> from, from it. Hey, uh, real quick, sure. uh, on the uh, uh, history of Kansas, uh, the, there's, uh, and you know, you, you said you was wanting to talk about uh, uh, all the uh, atrocities uh, done against the Indians in America. Sure. Uh, just a, a quick uh, Google, anyone can find out that uh, in 1648, uh, there's a, a French uh, a priest uh, that was killed by the uh, Mohawks. Uh, he was from France. Uh, he um, he taught the uh, uh, Iroquois, and this is up in the New York area. Uh, but then uh, if you go to the Kansas area, there's a uh, uh, Franciscan Juan de Padilla, and he came up with the uh, uh, Coronado to Kansas. Uh, they was welcomed by the uh, Wichita Indians, uh, Indian tribe. Wow. Uh, returned, Padilla stayed, and uh, the one uh, history book I read uh, said that he was on his way to go share the gospel with another tribe, and the tribe that he was with was jealous because they didn't like that tribe, and they killed him. Really? I was not aware of that. Well, that's, that's fascinating. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit. And that's kind of fun with the with the holiday traditions here just for the local area. That's really cool. Okay. Well, you have a great holiday. Hey, Gary, I appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving to you, my friend. I appreciate that. Seven two eight. Very cool. A little history lesson here for Thanksgiving here in the Wichita area. That's kind of fun. Seven two one eight two five five seven two and talk Got a couple minutes left before we got to take a break. Let's take another phone call, though, here. Good morning. What's your name? Hey, just real quick. This is Dan from Wichita. I had to pull over because I was so offended at what you said. <laughs> okay. The fact that you are homophobic, I don't know if I can handle that. Wait a second, I'm homophobic? Hobophobic. Oh, hobophobic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, that, that uh, you know, hobo Bob in the corner at the family dinner there. I, I, think, I, I mean, you know what? I, I, I think I'm going to park my car and walk to work and protest <laughs> all the good hobos out there. I mean, in fact, I'm gonna, matter of fact, there's a train track right here. I'm going to go salute it. Oh, well, there you go. And see, at the same time, then then you're then you're being able to properly take care of the environmental side of this as well by walking to work and, and by parking. So uh, you're doing two favors here. 
See, I'm doing that thing now where I point to my eyes and point to your eyes and go, you've now got it. You know what? I'm, 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 back, I'm, back, I'm back to listen again. You're good to go. Hey, there we go. I love it. Dan, I appreciate it, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving to you in the family. I love that. 721-8255-721. Talk. One more break. We'll wrap up hour number two when we come back. Gypsy Freeman going to be joining us in hour number three as well. This is The Voice Reason on KQAM. The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason, wrapping up hour number two. Can you believe it? It goes by way too fast. I still want to hear from you, by the way, today uh, with your family traditions for Thanksgiving, with your Thanksgiving recipes that you may have, or even if uh, I want to hear from you, that story that we read in the last segment about now the Girl Scouts of America during the holidays telling you not to force your little daughters or girls to go and give hugs to the family when they walk in the door, because then that's teaching them that they need that physical contact for later on down the road for i don't even know what i don't even know what that's supposed to mean don't give little aunt Susie a hug when she walks in or get you a present she needs to make that choice on her own as a four-year-old doesn't make any sense to me 721-8255-721 talk also i didn't get to it this hour we may have a little fun with it in hour number three with gypsy freeman while she's in studio here but here it is i don't know if it's possible or not apparently it's somewhat possible but uh this was according to the washington post how you can make a gluten-free, kosher, no soy, vegan, organic, low acid, no dairy Thanksgiving. Is that possible? We'll find out from the Washington Post. Also, we have the tips on how to be <laughs> environmentally green when you're Thanksgiving or even vegetarian when it comes to your Thanksgiving dinner. Is that something you want to do? I kind of like the traditions that we've heard so far in this show of going out and hunting your own turkey on Thanksgiving Day and then defeathering it, cooking it all on the same day and making it a nice little tradition. I love that idea. Let's do something like that. What do you say? This is your show. It's time to speak up, speak out, speak loud, speak proud, speak the truth, and always speak some reason. It's a free Thanksgiving. Let's have a little fun with it. This is The Voice Reason on KQAM. Hour number three coming up in just a minute. Stay here. It's time for reason. Yes, yes, and yes. They should be scared. They should be absolutely petrified of the fact that we are talking about trying to change the Constitution because this is their loophole. Now, what we have to do, Republicans, you have to rally around one singular movement. You have to create the amendment in order to change the suitable funding phrasing in the Constitution. You have to be able to do it. This is the voice of reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome into the Voice of Reason, hour number three. The Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker, 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side, KQAM. It is a Wednesday. It's the pre-Thanksgiving holiday. We're celebrating. We're rocking and rolling. We're having a great time. We appreciate you hanging out with us while you're getting prepared for this. Hopefully, you're actually having a day off. Hopefully... You are wrapping up whatever you need to at work and be able to get off early today, or you're just enjoying at home, maybe going hunting today and getting that bird yourself so you can cook it up for tomorrow. Whatever the case is, it's Thanksgiving. Let's celebrate and enjoy it a little bit, shall we? 721-8255. 721-TALK. If you want to join in, you can shoot me a message on Facebook, on the Voice of Reason page, on the KQAM page, and on the Twitter at Hoosier Reason. The Facebook live feed is up and rolling as well. You can see it, and we have the dual screen and the dual cam on now uh, for our guest in studio. If you remember, what was it? It was about a month, couple of months ago. The big story broke during the Donald Trump, I guess it was even longer than that, after the election. The Donald Trump story, of course, has been the big one all year long, and you either love Donald Trump or you hate him, apparently, and if you hate him, you think that he's just the bigoted, racist, whatever else you want to call him, and everybody that associates with him is nothing more than just the same thing, and we've seen story after story after story of people being beat up by Antifa, people being beat up by the uh, anti-fascists that are moving around society. One individual, as you know, was even here home uh, locally, originally from the Wichita area here, Joined a contest 
because that's her industry, that's her line, that's what she does. Joined the contest, won the contest, and was revoked of her winnings from the contest because she was nothing more than a Donald Trump supporter. This was the makeup artist Gypsy Freeman here from the Wichita area. Gypsy joined us in studio. Good morning to you. Appreciate you coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. What a year it's been. <laughs> What a year it's been, to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Now, if if people don't remember this, if this was the what was it was Kat Von D doing a new makeup line, correct? It was for her new packaging on her perfume, the Saint and Sinner perfume. Okay, uh, so so she got the new packaging, and this what was the price? You you were going to get like what a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars along with a trip out there for the releasing of this, correct? I think they said the total was twenty one hundred, and it was the a trip to the launch party in L.A. for this. And once they found out that you supported Donald Trump, and how did they even find out it was a Twitter account or a Facebook or something? (laughs) No. So last November, right before the election, I posted just a Trump campaign sign, just a single Trump campaign sign. And once I won, uh, people had started flocking over to my page just to see who I was. Sure. Scrolled all the way down, happened to see that from last November, and there you have it. (laughs) It snowballed. So this was, what, four or five months later after you had posted this, too. So they dug pretty deep because, I mean, first off, they found you, which was cool because, hey, you know, who's this person that that won this big contest that's really that does some really good work? And then they found it from months and months ago, and that automatically disqualified you. (laughs) It was pretty crazy. They really did. they, They dug, and then they went over and they reported. They reported to her the they little reported. tattletales. Did you know she's a Trump supporter? Yeah. And then what? What? Did Kat, I don't even remember what did Kat Von D say to you that they, she can't associate with Trump supporters and fascists and whatever. So therefore, sorry, but thanks. You, no thanks. You're not going to be part of this. Yeah, she just started going on about how she drew a line in the sand between um, uh, between us and as far as what she was comparing us to homophobic you know all you you go down the line misogyny and all of that of course uh, nazi you know you name it that's that's what was in there yep you know she's the she's the true fighter by closing <laughs> out and being you know, the closed minded one of anybody who disagrees with her in exactly. that sense did anything come of that was there a legal suit filed against that saying that hey these were the standard that there was no qualifications in the rules of saying that when i submitted i had to be a non-trump supporter to be able to win this package and i had said that too i said you know maybe for future contest you should put that in there so we need not apply (laughs) she's like well honestly i i hadn't thought of that because basically we're like magical unicorns (laughs) we don't the magical fairies have it wait a second here Uh, maybe i should put that in there because i never thought a trump supporter would actually want to do uh, support my product yeah it was insane i was like okay so so all the people that buy your products are apparently anti-trump Aren't these the elitists that say that we should be happy and just, uh, you know, tolerance tolerance of everyone? Tolerance for everyone. Everyone. Yeah. (laughs) But now we're going to put into a clause for our next competition. If you're a Trump supporter, need not apply. We don't need you on there. (laughs) I've never heard of such a thing before. I haven't either. It was it was shocking. First, it was very shocking that I even won. I haven't won anything in my entire life. (laughs) And then when I did to have that reaction, when I did not bring politics into it whatsoever, but I'm not going to back down and, and delete that off my page. Right. Sorry. Nope. Well, so you can't be an apologist. No. You, you can't be in any sense. And by being an apologist, and that just goes against everything that you already stand for, Yeah. Uh, to bow to their will. So good for you. I'm glad that you stood up there. What kind of response did you get afterwards? Did you get, I'm sure you got some <laughs> negative, but did you get some positive as well? Uh, Yes. I, I got positive actually from both sides, which really surprised me. I had tons of liberals coming on saying we're so sorry this happened to you you didn't deserve this so i was re- i was really surprised at that i mean i have wow. tons of liberal friends and i've never sure. had this type of issue with them i love them dearly so because it's never brought up it's not an issue that you talk about r- right and i didn't bring it into an art contest either so right yeah i was crazy sure so well at least you're getting some response from that side hey wait a second uh, maybe that changed their mind maybe that was the light maybe you did something subliminally for them to say my side's a little intolerant of my tolerant <laughs> views. I think that it did open a few eyes to to see how, you know, people that say they're so tolerant are literally not. So, is it kind of the the quiet norm? I mean, you mentioned you do you do the makeup artistry. 
Uh, and it, I, I don't see how that could be very political unless you're actually doing a political set of some type of commercial or some type of photo shoot or whatever it is. But other than that, I mean, is there an underlying norm of everybody just assuming that the makeup artists are like the celebrity side of the elitist side of the establishment, whatever, that enjoy the liberal progressive mindset and everybody just kind of goes under that assumption? She seems to think so. I mean, she she lives in L.A. She's around them all the time and she seems to think that we are all just, liberals just and anti-Trump, yeah, sure, it was bizarre. Yeah, I, I it, it was as far as you know, Wichita and Tampa. No, I haven't really had that. People yeah. haven't said that to me, so that was kind of strange. But yeah, hmm. definitely, I don't think I, I've had several artists contact me and and say, "Hey, we saw your story. We just want you to know you we you have our support. We're the same way. You wow. know, we hide." But we're the same way. <laughs> we hide. We stay in we hiding hide. here. We're the underground conservatives in the art and makeup artistry, uh, which I guess I can see. I mean, majoritively art itself, whether it's painting, whether it's photography, whether it's makeup, I guess you could lump that in there, uh, is is being predominantly more progressive because they always like to say that they control that side of society because they're the ones that express themselves a little bit more but conservatives express themselves just as much in artistry and obviously you're able to do so with with makeup we're able to do so as theatrical performance quote unquote on the radio to be able to make entertaining talk radio to some degree and uh, so uh, there is art from the conservative side even in music but i guess there's really i guess you're right i guess we are kind of in the minority there Maybe, maybe not. I mean, they call us the silent majority for a reason. Yes. So I'm sure, I'm sure, lots of people are hiding, and the, and the other people just don't want to rock the boat. I mean, I know makeup artists higher up in the industry around celebrities and stuff like that probably have to, you know, keep it under wraps if if they are because of this sure. crap. But <laughs> sure, talk about your industry because it is fascinating. It's something that we usually don't hear a lot of in the mainstream doing makeup artistry for. Uh, what, do you do photo shoots? Do you do movies? Uh, do you do a plethora of different things? I mean, what do you work on? I do a lot of photo shoots. I do a lot of fashion editorial and beauty shoots. Um, I've done underwater, which is I love. That's love kind underwater. of fun. Yeah. And how do you do that without the makeup smearing? I have to use the right stuff, and I just <laughs> I just figured out what works and what doesn't. But yeah, that's very fun. And then uh, I've done some production, and I've not done any movies yet. I've done some music videos, but no movies music yet. Music video? What kind of music yeah. videos have you done? It was for, like, an indie band in, in New York. I oh, still fun. haven't. Yeah, I still haven't gotten the video back, but yeah, it was fun. You're like, I kind of <laughs> like to see this. Yeah. yeah. What is there a certain style that you do? Is there, I mean, you mentioned you like doing the underwater stuff, but uh, it's just the, I don't even know, the colors, the the style, the shading. I mean, is there something that you really like to do that, that really helps you do your thing that your specialty is? Um, well, I combine fashion styling with it. I think you would describe my style as being maybe more edgy and strange. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not... Probably unique. not the norm. A yeah. little bit unique. And we got some of the pictures. I'm going to post them on the Facebook live feed uh, here in just a bit so that way everybody can see them because it's really cool work. And it, it, you're right. I guess it's, I wouldn't say strange, but uniqueness and, and it's a little bit different instead of like the everyday kind of makeup that you put on just to go out and do your business. Yeah. So it's I a little bit more fun. I sent you some of the most recent stuff and maybe one underwater shot. I think I did I see one of those. Yeah. Do. Where it looks, yeah. it looks like a, a mermaid or something on that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Me. That's you. That, <laughs> yeah. well, that's you as the mermaid there too. Yeah. So you do some of the uh, some of the uh, actual posing on there as well. Yeah, along with the makeup of, stuff. Yeah, I do a lot of modeling for How the fun. shoots that I do. Yeah, How so fun. fun. It's so fun. That's got to. It's got to be a blast to do. Is it? I mean, when you do that, is that kind of long hours? Is it a long long project? The underwater definitely is. Yeah, the other stuff can be too. We usually, I mean, we probably take more time than normal, but we just. We like to switch it out a lot, and we we pitch everything we do to publications. So okay, that's the reason it takes a little bit longer. But yeah, the underwater took probably I would say like five hours. Five hours just to be yeah. able to get that one shot there. Oh uh, uh, no, we, no, we got other shots. I just didn't send them to you. Okay, but, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say when you go through, I'm sure that you're just doing the click, 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 and see which kind of photos you come out best with. Yeah, then we call through, and then we go through and figure out which ones are the best. So. Now, when you do something like this, you mentioned that you get hired on by different photo shoots. Do you do projects on your own and say, this was kind of my expression here, and then as you pitch it out to somebody else and say, hey, here's some of my product, here's something you can work with, or do you predominantly wait for the call for someone to say, we need a makeup artist to be able to do this kind of project? No, for the test shoots, I do I do all the creative direction. I come up with the concept. Basically, I do everything but the photography. 
So um, I just, I don't know where it comes from. That's, it's just a creative. It's creative. <laughs> it's it's strange. A good, it's a good time. No, I like it. 721-8255, and talk Gypsy Freeman going to be in studio here with us for a little bit. We're going to get into some, I uh, got to get your thoughts on some of the current events with politics. Okay. Because, hey, I mean, Trump supporters, we got to unite here. That's we right. got to do that. <laughs> along with Thanksgiving, we'll have a little fun with that. It is Open Line Seal all hour long. I want to hear from you, your holiday traditions, your Thanksgiving food and recipes that you do that may be a little unique. We need to have a little fun today. It's a pre-Thanksgiving holiday. Let's celebrate. It. It's the voice of reason. It's KQAM. Stay right here. You're listening to the voice of reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker KQAM. It is a pre-Thanksgiving celebration. Everybody on the Facebook Live making comments. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Enjoy the family if you're heading out of town. If you're traveling, safe travels to you. Don't worry, we'll be back when you get here. we got some really big, cool stuff coming up on the show in the next month or so. Can't disclose it right now. Some, some really, really big things. Not to mention... The legislative session kicking off in January. We've been starting to have on some of the legislators. We'll continue to do so leading up to the legislative session. And I have a big project we're working on to remind our legislators about the tax rates here in the state of Kansas and what they need to do when it comes to spending. So stay tuned in. We'll have a little fun with that coming up as well. I can't disclose anything right now. It's all in the works, but if it happens, <laughs> they're not going to like us very much. Let's just put it that way. In studio with this Gypsy Freeman, the makeup artist here from the Wichita area. How long have you been? Did you grow up here in Wichita? Yeah, I was born in Wichita. You are born in Wichita. Mm-hmm. Where all do you travel for your work, by the way? Oh, I've been as far as Gary, Indiana. I've been um, Texas, Oklahoma, just you had to mention Gary random. Indiana. I'm going to have to start singing the Gary Indiana song now. <laughs> yeah, great. We did a shoot with a photographer from Ohio there. Really? Yeah, we're we're friends with him, and he does awesome, like, kind of dark type work. So we went to the abandoned city and shot in this um, this gothic church. It was wow. amazing. Yeah. How fun. How yeah. fun. That's got to be cool just to go and travel and experience some of those things. I love traveling, yes. Do you do a lot of, like, beach shots as well? Yes. Well, I just, yeah, just recently we started doing beach shots. But, yeah, it's tricky because you can't do, I mean, if you if you style with shoes, you have to, you have to either you know, buy them or, I mean, you can't, you can't go pull and then shoot on the beach with shoes. So, uh-huh. Let's see. Yeah. That would be a little difficult. Uh, were you involved uh, we mentioned briefly when we, uh, when we were talking before months ago, you were out in Florida doing some shoots. Uh, were you affected by the hurricane when that came through? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We spent the night in the VA hospital. Wow. <laughs> Hey, well, there you go. That, uh, I mean, as long as you guys are safe, though. But yeah, were you doing shoots on the beach at that time? Well, we looks did like the, something's coming in. Yeah, we did the day before, actually. And we were just, you know, looking around thinking, okay, well, good so far. Let's see good what so happens. Far, let's do it. YOLO. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. Very good. Well, being the Trump supporter, we got to ask you some of the, I don't know how much you're able to follow some of the current events, but uh, this year, I mean, what did you think of the first year of the Trump presidency? Is it what you expected? Is it something more? Is it something less? Uh, I think it's probably what I expected. He's he's a pistol, and that's <laughs> that's one of the reasons I love him. <laughs> he's a, That he is a pistol. Uh, should he, I know they ask everybody this, but should he lay off the Twitter, or do you like his Twitter comments? <laughs> Oh, gosh. Should we change someone's personality? Mm. I don't know. Uh, see, It's a that's, tough one. That's it's a, a tough, tough one. one. Sometimes I'm like, did you? Did, how long did you sit there and think about what you were going to tweet? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true. I mean, sometimes he's, I mean, the first, first ones are at five, six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Which I don't know why he's up that early. Just Drink saying, some hey, coffee you know first, yeah. dude. Drink some coffee. Have a little coffee. Now, like the latest thing with the LeVar Ball, the basketball, the, the dad of the basketball oh coaches and, and the players that were shoplifting out in, in China. And I mean, the, the, I know the big talking point everybody asked a couple of days ago, should Donald Trump have responded to LeVar Ball on this comic? Because LeVar Ball doesn't give Donald Trump credit for releasing his son from prison. Well, first of all, why would you steal in a communist country? Why would you steal in the first place? Uh, yeah, exactly. But if you're going to, if yeah. that's just your thing, why would you do it there? <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. LeVar Ball came out and said that, well, he's actually a really good kid. And we've seen worse things. So trying to trying to explain and uh, and and give an excuse for his son stealing in the first place. But you're right. It's if you're disgusting. going to, why would you do that? Yeah. In a communist country, in a foreign country, period. 
Why would you say, hey, you know what? I'm foreign nation. I'm representing America, and I'm just going to go steal something out of a convenience store. Right. And the fact that he sat there and defended his son or made excuses for his behavior just tells what type of a person he is and how he raised his son. Mm -hmm. I mean... (laughs) And I have to agree with Trump, and I actually kind of like that tweet responding back, being like, yeah, maybe I should have kept him until I'm until my next trip in China. Yeah. Oh, I totally think he should have. I mean, I'm glad he did. If you're not going to give him the respect, at least say, I mean, the, the, now the player did say thank you. When it, his, his press conference statement said, thanks to the Chinese police for handling it appropriately. Thanks to President Trump for getting me out. Thanks for, you know, everybody else, and I'm not going to do this. I realize I made a mistake yet. So that should have been done and over at that point without any more comments from either side. But did his PR coach him to say that, or did he well, give a heartfelt thank you? Uh, no, that it. was, uh, thanks, everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Unfortunate. LeVar Ball, <laughs> I've never been a fan of him anyways. I don't know if you listen to any sports talk at all. Colin Cowherd had him on a few months ago, and it was just he's just an angry, bitter guy. Oh, and I just therapy. He does need therapy. <laughs> he does. I don't know. Especially now. Expe- yeah, especially now. Thinking he's got a hot head now. Donald Trump commenting on that. I thought it was brilliant. Got to take a break. Bottom of the hour here. Uh, one more segment. Gypsy Freeman. When we come back, uh, we'll talk about some of the Thanksgiving stuff a little bit and uh, get your thoughts on Thanksgiving. Some of the specialties when it comes to Thanksgiving. Open lines to you as well. Wrapping up the show today. It's a best of show tomorrow. We'll be back on Friday. By the way, Black Friday shopping. I saw some of uh, the. The stats on the most risky states to go shopping on Black Friday when it comes to violence may have to touch on that one when we come back as well. This is The Voice Reason. Stay here. When it takes two to read the news. I'm trying to warn everybody and nobody takes me serial. You're in the wrong place. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on The Big Talker, 1480 AM and 1025 FM, KQAM. Welcome back into The Voice of Reason, wrapping up the show today. It's a Wednesday. It's a free Thanksgiving holiday. Let's celebrate, baby. That's what it's all about. 721-8255, 721-TALK. If you want to join into the program... Shoot me a message on Facebook, on Twitter. I don't do the Twitter thing. Do you do the Twitter? No, I can't uh, freaking figure Twitter out. Thank you. See, I can't. I can't. And then every time I get on here, Bernie Sanders is the first thing that pops up. <laughs> Ber- I hate Republicans and we need to stop the repeal of Obamacare. And yeah, that's every time I get on there. But you can shoot me a message on there if you'd like to. At Hoosier Reason, along with the Facebook live feed that it, it, that's uh, up and rolling as well right now. You can shoot me a message on there. We'd love to hear from you. Happy Thanksgiving as you're traveling around. Did hear from some people traveling and heading out of town today and for the weekend for the holiday. I will be gone the second week of December. Actually going to get back to Ohio for the first time in 10 years. It's going to be nuts. Uh, go back there a little bit. Hopefully not in the snow. Don't like the ice in the snow in Ohio because once it snows once in November, it stays there until May. And I don't like that. So, uh, we will be back there. I'm going to have some of the state legislators, state representative John Whitmer, going to be filling in. Bob Weeks of Wichita Liberty TV will be filling in. And Denidri Herber from Gidget Southway, the blogger, also with the Sentinel conservative blogger, going to be joining in and filling in for the shows uh, throughout that week. So stay tuned in for that. Going to be a great fun. That's, again, the second week of December that I will be gone. But we'll be off tomorrow. Best of tomorrow. On Friday, we will be here live again. As we give away, by the way, our very first Christmas tree, hat tip to 4C Christmas Tree Farms, we'll be giving that away on Friday. Stay tuned in for that. Uh, let's see, Gypsy Freeman in studio here for another segment with us. Uh, what projects do you have coming up after the holidays? Are you going to be traveling around anywhere else? Well, I go back to Tampa and I start working on a recent project. We're going to be trying to launch a YouTube game show where makeup artists, photographers, and models go and compete against each other. So how fun. Well, that'll be yeah. kind of cool. Now, how's it going to play out? You got a, uh, a certain, is there going to be kind of kind of like the food thing? You got a certain food, a certain theme that you have to do, or are you yes. unique in your own way? How's this going to work? Yeah, basically there's going to be different challenges, um, and then we will, the judges will collaborate on who they think should win, and then we're going to have the audience voting too because it's a live streaming studio, so hopefully we'll have some audience re- interaction. And uh, we're planning the first episode, November 30th. So we should launch the first one 
Probably February, I would say. How fun. Yeah. Well, that'll be pretty cool. That'll be a good time. Uh, Can people are able to see maybe a website or the stream for that? Do you guys still kind of working on that? We're still working on it. We do have an Instagram. It's called The Beauty Matrix. Very cool. The Beauty Matrix. Get ready for that one. That'll be kind of fun. The most exotic uh, shoot that you have done uh, as a makeup artist, uh, the the coolest place, the coolest uh, theme, the coolest thing that you've done? I would say underwater. The underwater one? I would definitely one? say underwater. It's got to be tough. It, it, I mean, yeah, thank God I'm a good swimmer because <laughs> <laughs> that tail is not light. That's not, yeah, I don't know how it's a I... a silicone t- tail, so... So so you're sinking. You're kind yeah, of sinking. Right. You have yeah. to constantly be moving and... <laughs> It's wow. interesting. That yeah. would be fun. That would be kind of cool to, to witness just to see how something like that's done. Would you like to do movies? Uh, yeah, that would be that would be a challenge. I've never done that. That would be definitely something I would be interested in. Uh-huh. Do something like The Walking Dead with the zombie oh, makeup kind of thing? I love The Walking Dead. <laughs> I don't ever want it to end. <laughs> Have you watched this season, by the way? Yeah, yes. It, yeah. Yes. We finally just, uh, my wife and I just saw the the last episode from Sunday last night. We do it on iTunes uh, so we can see that. And it's it's getting intense. I You haven't seen the whole thing yet? It, well, no. Yeah, we've seen it. We oh, just, up uh, till. Uh, up till. Okay, yeah, we yeah. saw it. We purchased this season on iTunes so we can watch it the day after when it downloads on the computer. Oh, I love and it. And we finally watched it last night for the last episode. Yes. So it's pretty intense. I'm obsessed. It's a good time. <laughs> what, have you done kind of the zombie makeup thing before? No, I have not done special effects makeup. I have thought about going to school in Burbank, California for it. I just haven't made plans to do so yet. Haven't done that yet. Because of all the other stuff that's been going on, but I'm not sure if I would enjoy doing that or not. Uh, but I love looking at it. It's amazing. Sure. Those artists are insanely talented. Well, the tattoo artist that I did, actually, my t- the guy that did my tattoo in Colorado Springs used to do that before doing tattoos Seriously? was uh, doing special effects makeup for movies and stuff. Wow. And he uh, actually had done zombie stuff for when I worked at the rock station out in Colorado Springs. And he was a blast. Oh, he did a, so he cool. loved doing that kind of stuff. So, that is so cool. It's, I, it takes a long time. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's the hardest part. Exactly. That's kind of where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I have the patience yeah. for that, but I love watching the final results. Exactly. Well, as we're talking about The Walking Dead on Thanksgiving, uh, there you go. Uh, the Thanksgiving holiday, do you guys do anything spun, anything unique, any kind of foods that uh, that are kind of uh, off the wall or fun? Uh, no, we're so boring on holidays. No. There's nothing wrong with that, really. We're so boring on holidays. We're just... Just like, yeah, stick it in the microwave. There you go. Microwave <laughs> food. The Hot Pocket's a beautiful thing. There it is. Uh, well, here you go. You can try this one. A gluten-free, kosher, no soy, vegan, organic, low acid, no dairy Thanksgiving. What? Is that possible? No, no, no. Here's, How- the, here's the story. And it was written to the Washington Post as the first Thanksgiving of a second marriage. Six kids, three his, three, uh, three of hers. Uh, with all four parents, three siblings, a handful of nephews, and assorted family and friends coming between individuals who are kosher, who need it, which I don't understand the gluten-free thing. We've eaten bread for like the entire existence of mankind. Not sure why we're gluten intolerant nowadays. But nonetheless, no soy, no vegan, organic, low acid, no dairy in any way, shape, or form. Here's what she had to say. At the, as I began cooking Wednesday afternoon, the house began to fill up with our parents, siblings, kids. The gathering had less the lay the air of the family reunion and more the feeling of a first date our siblings and parents had met briefly our wedding but knew each other little there were gaps of religious backgrounds our two sets of children came from memories of thanksgiving's past different versions of the way it was supposed to be as i cooked i concentrated on my list of who couldn't eat what but started to worry how gluten-free flour would taste if the butter substitute was using I was using would create the right texture. If I could really make the entire meal without onions or garlic. Most of all, I worried about how to ensure that everyone felt they had a place in this new configuration of the family. Uh, there could be no single menu that would accommodate us all. I decided to make the challah bread, which I don't even know what challah bread is. No uh, b- the challah bread stuffing, whose recipe I'd been eyeing in the cookbook, relying on the fact that the other stuffing I'd already made had gluten-free cornbread. That doesn't even sound good. It used the last of the almond milk to make the batch of gluten-free sweet potato muffins, but unable to bear the thought of yet another trip to the grocery store, I decided to use soy milk and the cranberry bread, a lapse which I'd had to warn my sister about. This sounds like the horror. This sounds like a Halloween horror of Thanksgiving dinners. Oh, gosh. Just go out and shoot it, and then there will be no gluten, no dairy. Exactly. (laughs) We had a caller last night. Their tradition is they go out and go deer hunting on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Do a turkey hunt. Get the turkey and then make the turkey. (laughs) Yeah, go back to the good old days of hunting it and cooking it yourself. Yeah, there you go. You're you're gluten-free, kosher, no soy, vegan, organic, low acid, no dairy Thanksgiving. 
that doesn't even sound as my appetizing. My sympathies. My sympathies. My sympathies. That's right. Uh, the, going back to the politics for a minute here, and we talked about the tweet. Do you think we're going to get a repeal of Obamacare? Can Trump pull it off? Uh, I think he can. I really do. I think he can. I hope he does. More power to him. I just don't know what, what the time frame would be. I think he can. I hope so. It really comes down to, I guess, the Republicans, whether they're actually going to get on board to do it or not. If they would stop spending their time protesting <laughs> protesting him and get get with the program. What he does. Yeah. yeah. What about the tax? His, his latest comment that he actually made yesterday was that he hopes to sign a tax reform bill by Christmas as a Christmas gift to everybody, which means starting January 1, we would have lower tax rates across the board uh, at the federal level. That would be insane. If we can make it happen. He, I don't know, man. He's a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that term. He used, he's the pistol. I mean, the House passed their bill. The Senate's voting on theirs. I don't know when they're going to vote on it, but they're writing their bills still. Uh, they have to come together, find a blending of the two bills, and then vote both of them on it again, and then send it to the president. That's a lot to do in a month when we've had a Congress that hasn't liked to do anything as of yet. That is a lot to do in a month. Well... If if not in a month, maybe shortly after. I don't know, but I'm I'm so glad that he's he's just so proactive. I love it. It is good. I mean, that type A personality, the business mindset is what mm-hmm. we need. I mean, we had Corey Lewandowski in town just a few weeks ago, his uh, his top eight advisor, and he had talked about how Trump wanted Obamacare repeal by April. He wanted tax reform by August and September. It hasn't happened, and he made sure that he kind of turned the the business side around in the White House to where they weren't slacking. They show up on time. They do their jobs, which is something that a public servant of the government employee has not done in a long time. Oh, I know. It's insane. It's insane. I I don't get it. I don't either. Uh, coming up after the holidays, you said you're working on the project there. Are you going to be traveling anywhere exotic? <laughs> anywhere fun? I guess if I, if I make it happen, sure. I think we're going to build a tank to put in the production studio to do the episode underwater. So that's like the most exotic thing I can think of. That's off still kind of cool. I mean, the beaches, we have the beaches. We have Deadwood beaches. That's that's exotic, right? That is. That is. That's pretty that's pretty cool. I mean, just Do the I fact that you to get to, to travel Fiji? around. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes. Uh, no, it is fun. I mean, where it's a lot of people just don't I'm stuck in my studio twelve hours a day. Oh, so the, the outside area is like foreign it's new world to me. So you, you need to come visit. It's it's kind of fun to be able to go out and see different areas. So that is kind of fun. That is cool. Uh, I'm glad you came by. I wanted to get you in here just because the fact that first off. I mean, conservatives need to see what's happening with Republicans and the way that they're attacked, especially when you go a little bit more to that. I mean, you are part of that industry that looks frowningly upon, for the most part, it seems like, just as a norm against conservatives. Uh, So thank you for what you do in that sense. Also, being a small business owner from the Wichita area, going out, doing what you want to do is really cool. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me on. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. Appreciate you coming to the studio. Got to get you back in the studio again here soon when you come back. Awesome. Thank you. Good times. We'll take one more break here, wrap up the show. Your phone calls plus. We do have, again, the states that are the most uh, prone to violence on Black Friday. Do you go Black Friday shopping? I used to, and now I don't. Not uh, yeah, frightening. It's, it's, it is frightening. I think yeah. I'd want to conceal the carry to go out and brave See? the Black Friday shopping. See, there you go. But then again, you're that gun-toting Second Amendment conservative nut job. Yeah. Nut job all the way. That, all the way. That's what That's what we do. Nut jobs across the board. This is The Voice Reason here on KQAM. <laughs> The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on The Big Talker, KQAM. Welcome back into The Voice of Reason, wrapping up the show today. Thanks again to Gypsy Freeman swinging by studio talking about kind of the fun side of makeup artistry along with the politics it's thanksgiving i want to hear from you for the last couple of minutes what's on your mind i want to wish you a happy thanksgiving what you're doing what your plans are i'd love to hear from you 721-8255-721 talk i haven't gotten to this yet but if you want to do a green environmentally friendly thanksgiving I don't know why you would want to. But if you want to, you are more than welcome to be able to try. And here's the tips for you. According to U.S. News, why they're doing a post on this again, I have no idea why. Everybody trying to be nice and environmentally friendly. Uh, Here you go. Consider the vegetarian options when it comes to your Thanksgiving feast. 
Oh, we got to play the approach. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Let's play the sounder first. It's your pinko flaming commie corner. Woo-hoo! Okay, there we go. I feel a little bit better now. Uh, your green environmentally friendly Thanksgiving, one of them being the vegetarian options, trying the tofurkey. No, that's not a cuss word. The tofu turkey. The tofurkey. <laughs> it's a real word, I promise you. The free range family operations, or by offsetting your main course by adopting the farm sanctuaries, gregarious turkeys, uh, or even going for the tofurkey. Cook cleaner. You don't have to keep the burners on as long as you think. You also don't need to use as much water. I mean, for the oven, don't you need to have it on for a certain amount of time to preheat and then put the turkey in or put the food in or the pies in and then bake everything and then turn them off at the end? I don't know how many people waste the oven just by letting it sit there unless they're preheating it. Well, you never know. You're the problem with society, remember? Oh, yeah. Offset your travel. Offset your turkey. Walk, bike, carpool, or even catch public transportation so that way you don't emit as many stuff of CO2 into the atmosphere and to be able to walk off your turkey, by the way. Uh, You can do this by also having the list of carbon offsetting sites that you can have online. Isn't that an oxymoron anyways? Anyways, manage the aftermath. You can use saran wrap and aluminum foil, which is really bad apparently, so don't use that. So even just make just enough for one meal without any leftovers or consolidate your leftovers all together. The decorations. You need to have certain decorations that are environmentally sound and friendly. Use mums and sunflowers, which are already in place, and lend lend themselves quite well to the Thanksgiving holiday. Natural decorations like red, orange, and yellow autumn leaves. Pre- or post-Halloween decorations serve as relevant backdrop inside and outside the home. Keep up your Halloween decorations and use leaves with bugs and everything on them. Sprinkle them all over your uh, table while you eat dinner. It'll look glorious, and you'll be environmentally friendly rather than purchasing a plastic cornucopia. The menu and shopping ask everyone to bring something. Instead of you cooking it all yourself, creating all that resources that you're wasting and using yourself by cooking, make everybody use a small portion, and you can consume. That way, you can have the nice little commune uh, for yourself. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. When it comes to your menu, you can opt for the fully vegetarian dinner like many people have nowadays done with the truly eco-friendly Thanksgiving dinner with, as we mentioned, the toe, the tofurkey or the free range, no turkey at all are our options. I don't know who doesn't eat turkey. Now, unless you have medical issues, totally see it. But come on. It's Thanksgiving. Come on. Are you a soup lover? Nothing like homemade soups with all your leftovers. Choose the turkey soup recipes. They're pretty good. Stretch your leftovers as much as possible, making them very eco-friendly Thanksgivings and greatly reducing your Thanksgiving carbon footprint. I didn't know there was such a thing. Also, as with any party that requires serving food, resist the urge to buy disposable plates and napkins. It is more money spent quite unnecessarily and can get expensive. You should get 50 plates and glasses and stuff for China. That way you can have 50 people over and be able to serve them on non-paper plates, right? These items will have to be disposed of too often, that, uh, and you don't want to forget those. Use styrof- don't use styrofoam cups or canned drinks. No! I don't know what else is left. Oh, by the way, I have an option for you when it comes to the gluten-free, kosher, no-soy, vegan, organic, low-acid, no-dairy Thanksgiving. You can have ice cubes. There you go. Ice cubes, baby. That's what it's all about. 721-8255-721 Talk. Just as a reminder, we'll be off tomorrow uh, as a best of for the Thanksgiving Day. I hope everybody enjoys. I know many many people may be going out of town enjoying it. Have fun. We appreciate you tuning in for us. We'll be back live on Friday. We will get to giving away a Christmas tree, or is it a wreath on? Oh, we have both of them, by the way. Head tip to 4C Christmas Tree Farms and all of our great participating sponsors on that. We will be giving away a wreath. A Christmas wreath on Friday. You want to put something up on your front door, have a little fun with that with the holiday festivities. Now's the time that we can finally decorate for the holiday, finally decorate for Christmas. I never like to decorate before Thanksgiving. Never, ever. It's not right, but the day after Thanksgiving, it's full on board. You're going to start hearing Christmas music on the show. You're going to start hearing Christmas liners. You're going to start hearing all the Christmas festivities along with the Black Friday and everything that happens after that. So we're excited for after Friday. We're going to be joined uh, for that. So, by the way, tonight as well, 
you can tune over and we'll have Shocker sound off for the Wichita State tournament. There's a lot of basketball tournaments for the Thanksgiving break. Tomorrow here on KQM, we got the K-State Wildcats, the OU uh, Sooners over on KGSO. So sports galore, football galore, and politics galore. It never ends. They're going to try. I guarantee you they're going to try and slip something through the last couple of days for the holiday over the weekend. Congress, Washington, D.C. will do something and we'll have to remind individuals to pay attention to that come next week. This is your show. It's time to speak up, speak out, speak loud, speak proud, speak the truth, and always speak some reason. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We'll be back live on Friday morning. Don't miss it. This is The Voice Reason on KQAM. Have a great day, everybody.